morning. Uh, we are to discuss new adjuvant therapy, and from point of view of biological behavior of a tumor, when you you know cure operable versus non-operable disease, you know the results outcomes are comparable, and of course. You know, new adjuvant uh, therapy was uh, prescribed in the situation uh, when tumor was not operable, and surgeons were trying to reduce um, a volume of uh, lesion of tumor. Now, first and foremost, you know, radiation therapy was uh, applied. What are the nuances? Uh, new adjuvant therapy is based on some animal models. As for new adjuvant therapy, there are no uh, animal models whatsoever. No, well, basically, we cannot uh, you know, perform like a real surgical procedure on rats or mice. Plus, you know, they are conditionally um, sensitive to chemotherapy. And what do we mean by preoperative therapy? Just clinical judgment, uh, discussions, because there's, uh, there are no material substrate for modeling. And uh, no matter what we say about advantages and disadvantages of pre- or post-operative therapy, as a rule, we do not compare comparable thing. Basically, it's common sense rather than evidence-based medicine. OK, let's assume that it's, un it's, un it's understandable that new age of therapy is one hand. It's a salvation path. OK, we cannot operate on a patient. It's a matter of terminology. In the setting of ovarian cancer, so we have to initiate therapy. Otherwise, we cannot uh, cure disease. But in fact, we call it differently, like a first-line uh, chemotherapy. And it, but the term is not that important as its context. OK, as for breast cancer, again, in order to reduce um, volume of tumor and uh, maintain cosmetics, it's OK. But uh, as for thor thoracic surgery, are we able to reduce uh, like an extension of um, surgical procedure by virtue of a new adjuvant therapy? Of course, lobectomy is not the same as uh, pulmonectomy. It depends on the organ localization. Optimists used to say, I'm going to argue with them. New adjuvant therapy works in vivo. Oh. And uh, you know, it may be given before and after operation. Those are the fantasies. As a matter of fact, we don't know uh, when you know the tumor becomes metast becomes metastatic, and uh, how to control dissemination of uh, the disease. As a matter of fact, I can refer to very elegant. Papers. Chemotherapy actually induces uh, formation of metastasis because it selects, you know, like those cells that are capable of dissemination. And basically, you no know, common sense is dangerous in this case. What else is significant? Uh, Neoadjuvant therapy is a very important component in clinical trial, no matter what. One way or another, uh, so if we discuss a number of organs, in particular like ovarian cancer, you know, there are many borderline situations. So uh, you can do either surgery first or neoadjuvant therapy. What do our surgeons um, think? Well, we reduce um, tumor size. One more significant issue again in extended operation. If you operate primary tumors and those, you know, the residual tissue may be found, so visual inspection is efficient. As for ovarian cancer, oftentimes you know, it's like surgeons do not see uh, this residual tissue. And again, in this case, common sense is useful. 
again, there are no models uh, for new uh, new age one therapy. Sorry for reiteration, but it's efficacious in adjuvant uh, regimen, uh, and it is proven in animal models uh, and mice. Disadvantages of both, you know, of times I I don't know. Again, common sense is mentioned. It's difficult for like a patient to uh, carry uh, a tumor, malignant tumor, because you know it may trigger dissemination of uh, malignant clones. New human therapy uh, may uh, boost uh, evolution of new clones. Uh, that those are even more dangerous than the previous one. A very important component, uh, I'm going to be referring to my own research, uh, new age of therapy reduces um, tumor size, but also it does selection of resistant clones. One more significant issue is a rule you know, again, a setting for breast cancer will use, you know, new adjuvant therapy to pursue cosmetic effects. In other cases, you know, we pursue outcomes, real. I know while arguing, people, you know, say, okay, if we are to choose, uh, the therapy is better. But let's calculate um, how much time um, is uh, wasted uh, and patients develop um, uh, complications and they progress, their disease progress. Of course, you know, it depends on uh, uh, tumor aggressiveness, but those are the arguments we have to take into consideration. It's very, you know, difficult for me to quote any standards, recommendations, guidelines, but new adjuvant therapy, you know, it's a new adjuvant therapy of breast cancer is a testing site. Uh, for other um, therapeutic approaches. But we need clinical observation. I have like a personal experience. You know, we follow up patients with hereditary cancers and I already uh, presented it and I was attacked by a doctor from Netherlands. Wow, you know, it's very uh, dangerous to prescribe new adjuvant therapy prior to operation. But it depends on country. There is no consensus, in other words. And look, take a look at the uh, rates of new adjuvant therapy in breast cancer, the standard uh, situation in mammalogy of floors. Of course, you know, you'll see like uh, huge differences as for other tumors. You do, you, <laughs> the level of experiment uh, is even higher. Okay, but we are discussing theory. You know, we have to segregate the situation. Okay, potentially uh, operable patient and neo adjuvant therapy is given in order to achieve some additional uh, merits. And the other clinical situation uh, is um, about non-operable patient and uh, neo adjuvant therapy is given to make them uh, operable. The clinical ideology is different. And again, it's uh, um, cyto reduction operations. Uh, if we treat colon cancer, uh, oligometastatic disease, uh, many hospitals be believe that it, uh, we have to start our treatment with the surgery. It's oligometastatic disease. But, you know, there is no such an ideology in other settings. If on the basis um, of experimental or biological um, issues, it's another story. But as a, a matter of fact, uh, it's not ideology. It, it depends on stereotypes. And we'll see a systematic approach in the future to uh, treatment um, for uh, oligometastatic disease. But, you know, we have to agree on what do we mean by oligometastatic disease. Okay, again, our own research. I already showed the slide several times, tens of times, but I keep showing them because they challenge uh, some 
stereotypes. I believe that this research is very successful. As a matter of fact, let's take a look at the beer, CA1 associated cancer. Angelina Jolie, who in fact inherited, you know, like a mutated uh, BCR, uh, BRCA1 gene, but she's healthy. But uh, that's uh, uh, tumor cell, cancer cell, uh, because um, uh, because of uh, somatic mutation, and uh, we have t like a um, tumor. Well, it's a wonderful therapeutic window. Uh, there is no DNA reparation, and it's present there. And basically, you know, we can resolve cancer issue with cisplatin or its analog um, that exercises huge effect. While planning this work, uh, this we thought we had different. Thoughts. Okay, you know, we were uh, studying well, ovarian cancer, the BRCA1, and we wanted to show the obvious, obvious apparent uh, thing. Cisplatin is used for ovarian cancer, but it's a hypothesis. And the patients with hereditary ovary, uh, cancer, sh you know, um, should uh, respond better. And that's exactly what happened in uh, reality. And now let's follow up uh, like an average patient with uh, in uh, familial cancer. All these patients um, uh, are diagnosed at advanced stages of disease. It's a bad tumor. Majority, vast majority of these patients, you know, um, they receive primary therapy. We call it new adjuvant therapy in order to convert non-operable to operable cancer. Since the tumor size uh, reduces very rapidly, these patients, you know, are operated on radically. And then, you know, they are given uh, efficacious therapy, the same therapy that was so efficacious before operation is given after operation. Um, but if this platinum therapy efficient, if um, the tumor size uh, goes down in, 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 in order to personify edge of therapy, you know, why do all these patients uh, re, um, develop recurrences within one year? Well, that's an answer to this question. Yes, there is a beer, CA. Uh, and those are the masses removed by surgeons. Restoration of BCRA1 function, and uh, you know, and basically, you know, we have a feeling that tumor knows in advance what are we going to treat it with. Uh, and, uh, and indeed, what's going on? You give therapy that works on uh, the visible portion of the tumor, but the population that is, um, you know, implicated in recurrency uh, remains intact. This platin doesn't work in it. It's a sad news. We've been so happy, you know, uh, with the reduction of tumor and process of therapy, but the tumor is, you know, aggregate of various uh, um, lesions. And we, yes, and I late, uh, destroy resistant cells, but at the same time, you know, we see the accelerated growth, growth of resistant cells. And then, you know, indeed, treating cancer is very difficult. Okay, that's a classical uh, view taught in uh, medical school. That's a normal cell, the tumor cell evolution. And that's already like a familiar hereditary thing. What do our works show? This event cannot be the first one. You know, mutation P53 should take place in cell first, because a loss of BCRA1 is not compatible um, uh, with um, cell flight. Cell dies of apoptosis. The most dreadful thing is these two types of cells uh, persist in any hereditary cancer. It's, you know, any hereditary tumor is a mixture of these two types of cells. 
And when you apply platinum, you know, this, you know, self escape. Uh, how to fight this phenomenon? Well, the oncologists take like a um, standard approach. If you want to eliminate um, more uh, cancer cells, you have to intensify your therapy. It's another BRCA1 um, specific drug. Uh, um, it uh, works on platinum sensitive and platinum resistant uh, tumors. Then we use the combination of mitomycin and cisplatin. Well, basically, it is allowed here for treating malignant neoplasm. And this combination of mitomycin and cisplatin was used in the past. And basically, you know, it's we know that it's safe. Okay, it's pre-operative therapy. The patient who couldn't have been operated on at the very beginning, 12 patient uh, was receiving this combination prospectively, and it's a retrospective group. Also, the patient uh, patients with hereditary cancers. But look, um, the response rate. It's 100 percent versus 58 percent. Well, it's, it's, it's significant. But the most important thing in the setting of ovarian cancer, again, we never see complete morphological responses to neoadjuvant therapy. We know why now, because of these two population of cells. It's not like breast cancer. No. And let's take a look. Well, of course, the samples, sample size are very small. But two patients uh, com responded to new adjuvant therapy completely. So we are hopeful that we cured uh, their cancers. I believe that's a, that's a very important indicator. And this regimen is better than anything else. OK, those are the conclusions. And I'm not going to reiterate them, but we challenge <laughs> many things. OK, those who you were A students in med school, OK, losses of uh, LL is not the first uh, event in hereditary cancer. But from point of view of clinicians, it's an ABC, a primer. OK, new age of therapy. So what kind of therapy should be prescribed after operation, post-operative? So mammologists intuitively, you know, do not follow this logic anymore. Look at the clinical trial design, anthrocycline and toxins before operation. If they responded uh, completely morphologically, you know, we do not give them a new adjuvant therapy. If uh, they do not respond completely, well, we give um, uh, capizotabin. Capizotabin is better than nothing, uh, again. So that's a we modify the therapy empirically. Uh, one, um, a couple of more stories, hunter's stories. Uh, it's a very important uh, control for new adjuvant therapy, whether there are residual uh, cancer cells. You know, no residual cells are good. As for site reduction operations, and Dr. Professor Levchenko uh, believed, and I agree with him. If, if, um, uh, after surgery, the patient has at least one lesion, will never ever get rid of it uh, by virtue of uh, new adjuvant therapy. No, well, it, it's not necessarily like a surgery per se, it may be radio surgery, but we be, I believe uh, we have to do something with those residual lesions. Well, we have good enough um, drugs, LK inhibitors, and the morphologists uh, see the complete morphological response. But the molecular studies that are more sensitive um, give us some 
bad prognosis we see cancer cell again in the setting of complete morphological response uh, no new adjuvant therapy is given um, well, again, the, there is a nuance, another nuance. Uh, but uh, we, in fact, uh, send the same uh, uh, glass to other morphologists, and other morphologists found many uh, residual cancer cells. Um, well, same same sample was interpreted very different. Okay, F FDA. In fact, already started reviewing uh, clinical trials on new adjuvant therapy, and you know, new. Basically, uh, we have to wait for several weeks prior to operation, and then. Um, so surgeons and researchers already study some parameters of uh, specimens. And basically, uh, many papers are being published now. 20 minutes ago, I mentioned paper uh, describing like um, immune therapy for three weeks uh, as new adjuvant therapy for melanoma. And in, basically, you know, and we can, after resection of that melanoma, uh, we can tell whether it's uh, a cure or treatment. You know, we can see the outcome, the result, in three weeks. It's uh, important for the patient, it's important for economy, because, in fact, you know, those are, the, the, the drugs are expensive. We can do biopsy three weeks after treatment initiation. And again, those are, it's our research, new adjuvant therapy for breast cancer, and we selected patient with BRCA um, mutations. Oh. And in this case, yeah, we see uh, uh, outcomes, I said, at least long, short term. As for long term, you know, they take on a different uh, up approach. No, basically, so we, you know, we need clinical trials with respect of patient safety. Oncogynecologists. You know, the European and American uh, schools argue between each other. Indeed, it's better to do complete site reduction and with good qualification of surgeons, anesthesiologists, and ICUs, and you know, if operation lasts from 8 to 12 hours. So 80% of ovarian cancer patients may, in fact, achieve primary site reduction because, you know, like uh, the gut, uh, colon, uh, liver, and spleen uh, operated on. But we cannot um, spend like uh, 8 to 12 hours on each patient, and uh, not every country has such wonderful surgeons. And the Europeans say, okay, you, you know, lose uh, more than you gain. Look at your perioperative lethality, look at your delayed adjuvant therapy, and, uh, and basically the outcomes are comparable, but we cannot perform, cannot do uh, randomized trial. That's our experience. If we take patients with um, varian carcinoma, Every third patient has a BRCA mutation, and the patient with serous uh, variant carcinomas, you know, maybe divided to BRCA plus BRCA minus mutation, and if they are operated on first and then given uh, chemotherapy, they do better. And the patient uh, who, well, well, again, there are many co-founders, uh, those who operated on a healthier, but if BRCA is present, it's a drug-sensitive tumor. And we already, you know, the, our work and the Italian research show that if patient uh, that doesn't want to uh, undergo surgery, uh, you can give um, new adjuvant therapy first. You know, it's uh, it's not. Are we ready to in implement uh, this? 
approach. I'm not sure. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for your brilliant lecture. And you have again kept the time frame perfectly well, so we have time for questions. Could you please pass the mic to this? My question is, uh, we do surgery uh, when we can do it, or we try to go with chemotherapy to the end. I understand you, my firm conviction is that traditional opinion that first we finish with the chemotherapy and then we uh, pass the patient to the surgeons. I think that we've got to perform surgery when it is most um, necessary and important when we have the best possibility that it will uh, help. Uh, for instance, uh, with us, uh, when we start uh, operating on the patients, when the effectiveness is at its peak, then we get better results. When speaking about resistant clonals, have you tried to evaluate it? Are these the clones uh, that appear during therapy, or there is certain selection? We try to determine this. When there is, uh, there are cases with the second mutation of clones. Uh, when it is the second mutation in the BRCA gene, uh, its function can be restored. But if we have a certain population of cells in the tumor that play certain part in the development of the tube, this is the most awful thing to happen. This is why we need surgeons who could remove what we have left. Again, that's a traditional issue. What was uh, the first? Well, I like discussions like that. Uh, we know that in the prostate cancer, we find that over 90% of cells have receptors of androgens, and the remaining 10%, when we uh, when we kill those 90% with hormones, the remaining 10% start to grow. In the U.S., uh, they first act on the receptors, and then they give a chemical drug which are resistant to hormones. I have also uh, uh, noticed your wish first to remove the tumor surgically and only then administer medication. I remember our old director uh, that the nurses, they didn't know then where is uh, 
the sick organ and where is the drug. Because when we remove quite a number of internal organs, for instance, in the pan with the pancreas cancer, when they remove immediately 45 organs, the patient just cannot leave after this surgical intervention. So perhaps we can perform surgery when we have a small tumor on the first or the second stage, but if we have a big tumor, then we have to start with mm, drugs, with chemotherapy. That's an issue of faith. No one yet knows what can happen and what would be better. Of course, now we are witnessing a great growth of results, uh, and that is the result of interaction between different levels of oncology. But it will be difficult to try to deal with the issues. <laughs>